So that's the long and short of it. I guess my point is, don't overthink it too much. <laughs> Maybe I could have started with that, I don't know. Hey, what's up guys? This is Ben, and this is the Honeydew Homestead. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. Uh, drop me a like, maybe a comment. All of that stuff is super helpful in helping me with the YouTube algorithm. If you are a subscriber, you're awesome. Thank you. And uh, with that, let's get right to it. So today's going to be pretty low-key, which I know sounds weird because, well, I guess most of my videos are pretty low-key. That's just kind of who I am. But I did want to talk about one thing today, and that's working with warm season lawns in the fall. You see, things are a little bit different in the fall uh, for uh, warm season lawns. During the, the peak heat months where <laughs> when you and I might go outside and we're just sweating buckets and it's super humid and it's hot and miserable, that is strangely the peak time for warm season lawns. They love it. That's like ideal conditions uh, for grasses like St. Augustine or Centipede or Bahia or um, Zoysia or any of those sort of southern lawns. I, I struggle to put Bermuda in there because I don't like Bermuda. <laughs> but uh, I consider Bermuda more of a weed, but yes, it is a summer lawn. And it's a very popular one as well. But fall is sort of like the reverse of spring, where as in spring, you have these really short days that get longer and longer until you hit summer and you've got like 16 hours of daylight, right? In the fall, it's opposite of that. You slowly start creeping down and down where you get maybe max 12 hours of daylight somewhere around the start of fall and then by by the end of fall beginning of winter you're hitting maybe six hours of daylight in addition to the sort of changing of that season as you're going into fall uh, you start having other issues in the yard some of those problems may include a lot of pressure from the leaves of trees, especially oak trees, maple trees, they really like to dump a lot of leaves. And so you have to kind of keep up with those throughout the fall. You don't want to wait until the very end because it's just going to build up and mat down and kill your lawn. Now, a lot of people might recommend that you rake up your leaves. I don't. I really don't. I think that raking your leaves, you're taking nutrients away from right where they need to be. The falling leaves, it's not just a danger to your lawn, but keep in mind that those leaves were created with nutrients that were mined out of the soil, right? And, and the soil needs those nutrients back if it wants to continue to feed those trees that drop those leaves. And in a forest, situation those leaves will fall and create a mulch around the tree as a form of protection so that the grasses and other competing vegetation don't ultimately take over that tree. We often talk about the forest as this symbiotic relationship and how you know everything's just holding hands and singing songs around the campfire. The reality is that nature is brutal those leaves that are falling off of that tree, those leaves are not there necessarily to feed the soil and, and help the wildlife. Those leaves that fall are a mulch. And for what other reason is a mulch but to smother any sort of vegetation or competition that may exist down below on the soil floor? So it is important that, that we do rake up those leaves. We don't want them to just sit on the lawn because it will kill your lawn. If you leave enough leaves there long enough, it will ultimately shade the lawn out. Especially with warm season lawns that rely very heavily on sunlight. If you crowd out that sunlight, you're going to kill the grass. Let's go somewhere a little more quiet. 
If I can find one, come on. Where was I? So, leaves. They're great, they're good. They're a source of nutrients, carbon, they break down very quickly. There's a lot of benefits to uh, leaves, which is why trees do what they, tr they do, at least deciduous trees do what they do. They drop those leaves, they create a mulch around the base of their of themselves to crowd out competition which means they get more nutrients for themselves they sacrifice their leaves during the winter in a time where they may not need it but they want to create a security blanket down at the soil to ensure that when they wake up in the spring uh, they don't wake up to a completely different environment where they've just been taken over by all kinds of weeds and vegetation and all all sorts of things that are stealing nutrients from them, from them that have been stealing nutrients all through the winter. No, instead they would rather smother that competition and save that nutrient for themselves come spring in those warmer weathers. All of that works great in a forest environment not so great in the lawn which leads me back to this idea of raking leaves a lot of people might tell you to rake your leaves and we see it all the time if you drive through any city you're gonna see bags and bags of of raked up leaves that are shoved off to the side maybe not even bags they just make big piles right next to the curb where the municipality might have a big truck that comes up and vacuums all those leaves for you. Sadly, you're robbing yourself. You're robbing your soil of all of those nutrients and you're making a lot of work for yourself in the future because you're taking away the, the job of those leaves which was to protect the tree from vegetation that's going to be stealing those nutrients whether it's through the winter or at least through the very early spring so now not only have you created this work for yourself of raking those leaves and bagging those leaves or at least piling them up you've stolen all of those nutrients that you now have to replace very likely with some chemical fertilizer and you've created a situation where you now have to mulch under all of your trees with mulch that you buy from the store, more money. <laughs> and it's this never-ending cycle because now you're also pulling weeds that probably would have been smothered if you just left the leaves there. So we really have a conundrum here, right? What do we do? We want things to look clean, we want them to look pretty. Here's my suggestion for anyone trying to strike a balance with all of this stuff. Yes, we can get the leaves out of the lawn. No brainer. The real question is what do you do with them once you collect them? Well, you can mulch them up and put them back under the tree because that's what they were meant to do. That's one option. In my particular yard, I don't have an overabundance of leaves. I realize that there are some yards where you are knee deep in in leaves. I don't have any trees on my property that are that old that produce that much carbon material and so I don't have to worry about that. So what I do with the leaves that fall on my property is I just mow them. That sounds kind of weird right everyone says rake up rake up your leaves rake up your leaves you're gonna make a mess it's every no no you won't no you won't the one thing that I do that is different from my usual mowing patterns is I will mow my my typical two or three rings on the outside of my my yard space I try to break the yard up into different areas and I, I first do those two rounds because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to throw the grass clippings back into the yard. I don't really want to blow them out into the driveway if I can, if I can avoid it. So I'll usually do about two or three uh, loops where I'm blowing everything back into the center of the yard. And then after that, I'll, I'll start striping. 
right? I'll go back and forth on the yard. In the fall, I change my technique. And so here's the two things that I do. The first thing I do is the week before I start this new mowing pattern, this is the one and only time really that I will take the clippings away because we're getting into that season where the grass is not as vigorous, it's not uh, decomposing as quickly, and so I'll take it away, and that's fine, it's not wasted, I just use it in the compost pile as green manure, it's fantastic. However, and keep in mind, I don't use any uh, herbicides, pesticides, any of that stuff, I just mow, I, I mechanically treat my yard, that's it, mow, mow, mow. So it's perfectly safe to throw into the into my compost. So what that leaves is the yard is very clean, very low in terms of just what you might call thatch or just some dead grass that hasn't decomposed yet. Because again, we're getting into cooler seasons, a lot of that biology is slowing down. Second, I mow in that same circle pattern, but I don't stop. I never come back in strip. I just keep mowing in a circle. And, and it is a little bit harder on the mower, but what you're doing effectively is mulching. I don't know if you can hear that. But what you're doing effectively is mulching. You're mowing and re-mowing and re-mowing the same discarded clippings over and over again because you keep throwing it into the middle of the pile as your ring gets smaller and smaller and then you just end up with a a pile of of green clippings that have been mulched like 30 times over right in mixed in with all of those green clippings is also any leaves that were sitting in the yard so you get a mix of that brown carbon from those fallen leaves and those green clippings and it all gets mixed up once it all gets pushed towards the middle in that pile then I'll kind of stripe over it a couple of times to spread it out and give it one last mulching. Keep in mind, you've run over these leaves at, at this point multiple, multiple times, and they're at most about the size of a dime. And so they're not going to have any effect on the lawn in terms of smothering the lawn out or anything like that. And what's even better, you've just added more carbon right into your yard. You didn't have to bring any compost in. You didn't have to do any of that. It's not compost yet, but it will be. Keep in mind, we're in the fall. We're getting into winter. This stuff's gonna start decomposing and it will be ready, easily ready by spring. Especially with all of the fall rain and the any snow melt or anything that happens through the winter by the time spring comes around, you're gonna have beautiful lush carbon sitting there waiting to give off that nutrient to your grass. So that's the long and short of it. I guess my point is, don't overthink it too much. <laughs> Maybe I could have started with that, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that one out, but that's really the moral of the story. Don't overthink it too much. I think what's important here is that you keep, you keep your grass finely chopped, you keep any debris that falls onto your yard finely chopped. You mulch it really nicely. You don't have to rake it up. You don't have to put it on the curb uh, and wait for the municipality to clean that up for you to rob you of your carbon and your nutrients. No, put it back into the soil. It came from the soil. Put it back, back to work. If you're interested in maybe some videos on how to better mulch your leaves that fall in your yard, Leave me a comment down below. Maybe I'll make a video about it. In the meantime, for now, I think just uh, mowing will do just fine for a very light pressure in terms of leaf fall. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. But, as always, you guys be good to each other. It's crazy out there. And I'll see you on the next one. Keep in mind that those nutrients were mined out of the soil. 
Guys, it's so loud. It is. You don't even know. If I took this microphone off right now, you would think that I'm in the middle of like Manhattan right now. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. I can't find a quiet place around here. Okay, let's do this again. At, at least around the lawn, because we want to, at a minimum, rake the... the uh, let's do that again. Blah, blah, blah.